Well, it's that time of year again for the bunnies at Maple Valley as they attempt to decorate for the night sky celebration. At this time, three to four bunnies between the ages of eight and up for 20 or so minutes are going to be decorating their little areas in attempts to satisfy one of two conditions, to make enough star decorations or moon decorations in their establishment. Visitors will come and pay homage to their little party area and the person who does it quickest and best will be nominated as the host. Now in this game additionally there are ways in which you can win with somebody else and in the game you're basically uh, drawing cards, playing them down, trading with the other people and attempting to uh, basically satisfy a condition. The conditions are either going to be either A gather enough moon decorations or B star decorations and whoever gets five first is the winner attached to the player who the star who the, the cards are pointing to. Can you satisfy the conditions first before any other player find out in the game bunny party at maple valley let's take a look down below i'll show you what the game comes with and how to play Welcome to the game Bunny Party at Maple Valley, and I went ahead and set it up for four bunnies to begin playing. But before we do that, let's talk about what you get. You're going to be getting the rule book and an explanation of the festival. You're going to be getting a deck of cards, and in the deck you're going to be getting four different types of cards. Decorations, both the moon and the star, item cards, and event cards. Events are played instantly, items are saved in front of you, and decorations are as well, and you're attempting to gather five of either one of these. You can't gather three and two, it has to be one of them and it has to be five. You're also going to be getting player reference cards that will hold the turn order on one side explaining exactly what you need to do on your turn and how the game plays throughout the rounds. There's also going to be five of the or six of these different uh, villagers that are going to be visiting your establishment. Deal out five of them and leave the other one aside. Place that in the middle of the table. You're also going to be getting these. These are trade tokens and you'll be setting them down next to the deck. Give everybody three cards cards to start the game off from the base deck after shuffling and every single player is going to draw two of these residents and choose one of them and put it in front of them. This is the resident they'll be using and every resident has their own unique ability. So after everybody has their own resident, trade token, and three cards from the deck as well as the five different visitors joining uh, the fray, go ahead and give one player this little coin here. If you're playing a three player game you're actually going to flip this coin and based on where it flips will determine what way the cards will face because in a three player game only one person will win with you but it'll determine uh, on which side and in a four player game either side will work and you'll be able to actually use uh, the different sides based on the moon and the star decorations to determine who you want to attempt to win with you. After you've given out the last thing in the game which is the player reference cards then you may begin. To begin the game you're simply going to tidy a card and to tidy a card you're going to basically discard a card face down to the discard pile or you'll You'll discard a trade token and pass one of your cards in your hand to another player. After everyone has done that by either A discarding cards, simply just doing it like this, or by B spending a trade token and giving a card to another player face down, then you're going to shuffle the discard pile so that you don't know who discarded what, and then you can go ahead and flip it face up, flip over any cards that were given to other players, and put those cards into that player's hand. The next thing that's going to happen is villagers are going to visit. You'll draw five villagers from the stack of villagers of six, put them in the fa face up here, and then in turn order, based on this little token here, players are going to gather their villagers. These are going to be helpful characters that will assist you throughout the game. The last one you will not need, and you can go ahead and remove for this round, but it will make an appearance on the next round. Then play cards. Playing cards is very simple. In turn order, you're simply going to play cards from your hand, whether they be events, items, or decorations. Decorations will go in front of you. Events will be played, and you'll correspondingly do exactly what the event says. And items are in front of you as well, and they'll provide some benefit. Like this one says, give an item in front of you to another player. If you don't have one, it's not of any use. Uh, or this one here, it says, take an item from another player. Then that player takes an item from you, but it can't be the same item with the same decoration type. So there are certain ways where players can gather items from across the table or trade with other players simply by using event cards. Eventually, all the cards will be played out either in front of the players that are corresponding with them or they will be played out to other players giving them some type of benefit. In this case, because it's a four player game, you're going to make sure that all the decorations have the front side facing up. So in this case here, this player is going to win with this player when playing the moon. And if they're playing the star, it will, they will win with this player. Because what happens is 
once a player gets five of these, then that player will trigger the end of the game and any, uh, of any person the cards are facing towards, based on the number, will be the winner. Eventually, all these cards, like I said, though, will be played. And when all the cards have been played for one reason or another, you can then move on to the trade phase, where both players can take or swap items using trade tokens. You'll be given a trade token every round, and there's also ways that you can gain them by playing cards from the deck here. Then, after trading, you're going to see if there was anything that uh, caused you to gain any more cards. And if there was, you're going to simply play those cards in order again. And those cards might be decorations, events, or items. Finally, you're going to see, does the party start? The party is going to start, like I said, if you gather five of the same type of decorations. And if that happens, then the game is going to trigger an ending. So in this case here, we've got three, four, and five moon cards from this player here. So if he had all five of these in front of him, then they are going to win the game along with the player to which these arrows are pointing to. And in general, it's going to look something like this. Uh, so this would, this would incur the end of the game, in which case both of these players would win. However, if no party has started, then all the villagers that players got will return home, and you're going to rinse and repeat the round again. But instead of drawing three cards, you're simply going to draw two cards and a trade token. Then continue once again, you'll tidy a card, you're going to have the villagers visit, coming back out again, play cards, trade, play cards again, check to see if the party starts, and villagers will once again go home. Other than that, each bunny has a specific unique ability to themselves that will say once per game in general, and you'll, you can go ahead and use that ability, and when you do, you can turn the card over or turn it to the side, just to denote that you have used that. Check to see whenever you get these cards here from villagers that uh, you don't have to use the ability instantly. Some of them will say when this village or visits you, which means when they comes into play next to you, you'll draw a card. And when that happens, you'll have a card to use for play. Or when this villager visits you, put the card of the discard pile, put the top card of the discard pile onto another into another player's hand, which can benefit another player, but that's okay because you can win with other players in this game. It's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward game, uh, Bunnies of Maple Valley. Let's go up and talk about the game, the party, and what I think about it, and whether you should pick this game up currently on Kickstarter. Bunny Party at Maple Valley is a family-friendly game involving decorating your establishment, gathering visitors, and hopefully gathering enough decorations to impress the village to allow you to host the night sky party. If you're able to do so, you win. But what's also unique about this game too is that players can win with other players. And of course, it's going to be based on the decorations that they choose. If you want to choose something like the moon decoration, the player on your left will be the player that wins with you at the end when you check for the party. If you choose something like the star decoration, the player on the right will be the winner with you. So you're going to be able to decide, do you want to actually try and fulfill the requirements or do you want to host the requirements with somebody else, making sure that they get what they need in order to start the party, which makes this game interesting because it is cooperative and yet it is competitive. If you notice a team of people working together to win, you might try and facilitate somebody else on a different side in order to win as well. Or you might try and bamboozle the player attempting to win with somebody else by having you win with them instead. And you're going to do that by trading by playing events, and by placing items in front of you. Secure the best position on the board possible, whether it be for trading or whether it be for gathering, and then utilize those skills in order to con basically control the game as to who you want to win and how. You'll be doing that with items and events. Events like spring cleaning, where you can discard an item that's in front of you, because some items are not good. Some items you do not want to have in front of you, they will not provide a benefit, they will provide some negative effect. Or how about a present? When you receive the present by playing it or from another player, draw a card. So giving things can benefit you when you gather certain cards as well. Choose another player who draws a card. So a lot of the cards in this game are actually meant to help other players in order to enable them to succeed, thusly allowing you to succeed. You just have to be careful Careful, though, because those players might not necessarily help you just because you have helped them. How about an item card that you put in front of you? It costs you an additional token to trade with other players. That's a negative. Normally it only costs you one. With an item like this, it's going to cost you two. And you only get a certain amount of trade tokens in the game as you're playing. Or an event card. Draw a card. If you have fewer decorations than any other player, you may draw another card. So there's certain cards that will allow you to catch up, in a way, in order to secure your position, because eventually you're going to run out of cards, and cards in this game are the main source of commodity. Trade tokens are important, and they will allow you to do certain things in the game. However, if you do not have cards, you have no position, and if you have no position, you're not going to win. The game's light, 
fun and friendly up to the point where you have to start making deals. You have to try and successfully gather those cards and you have to kind of cut out your competition in ways that uh, you might not foresee in a normal style party game because this one is definitely not normal. It's definitely different than you would have imagined. Something I was uh, not expecting when it came down to the strategy of this game in ways that were like, in one instance, I was playing the game and both players on my left and my right were attempting to win with me and I had to try and facilitate one or the other in order to secure my victory. But if I didn't specify who I was working with, I could get them both. If I did, then one of them or both of them might leave me and attempt to help somebody else and attempt to win the game. Because if I said I'll help you, then this person over here is going to go, uh oh, he's no longer going to help me, in which case I need to work with this player over here. Uh, and personally, I like the four player version the best. I enjoy playing with multiple players because that's when all the social aspects come into play a lot more. In a three player game, like I said before, you'll flip the coin and that will determine in which way all of the specific decorations will face and that will determine who you're actually working with. So it will be played sort of in teams. I work with you, you work with him, he works with me and we're all trying to secure victory. So I can either work with the player on my right or help myself. But if I help myself, this player over here is going to be the one helping that player over there. And so the dynamic switches, the dynamic changes. And it has a lot of that involved in the game. It's all family friendly and fun on the outside. But of course, the conversations and slight backstabbing that is going to be involved in this game starts showing its ugly head as you get closer and closer to winning. The artwork in the game is very cute. I really, really like the little bunnies. I like the story attached to them. Each of them have a unique perspective as to where did bunnies come from, whether it be the moon or the or the stars and how they came and why the decorations are being put up and why the party takes place and why it's such a prestigious thing to host this specific party. And it's all entwined in the game. Villagers coming to visit you and taking a look at what you've been making attaches to the theme of the game in which you're trying to make the best bunny party possible. So the theme and artwork all fit in so nicely. The quality of the game is very nice as well. This is a basic card game with some tokens that is, be is being utilized, so there's only so much to talk about as far as quality goes, but from what I see here already, this is exactly, this is already ready to play and ready to go. All the cards are there and everything feels great. There's a ton of replayability based on the social aspects of the game. Now to note, of course, every time you play, it's going to be the same, same simple style of the game. There's no different variants other than the three and the four player game, but what's here provides enough unique social interaction to change the flow of gameplay to affect you or the people around you into deciding to help you or not. You got to be nice, but you can't be nice all the time. And you have to be nice to specific people at certain times because you want to win and you're going to win in pairs in general. And because of that, two people or one person will end up missing out and you never want to be those people missing out. So you always have to be bartering and trading and making deals and suggesting things. And of course, utilizing your villagers, your own unique abilities, such as for instance, you've got this this, this gossip gal, right? When she visits, she counts as a star decoration and a moon decoration, but your opponents don't share a victory. So in this case, you can win all by yourself. And then, of course, when you gather your resident, your specific character of yourself, once again, you can t uh, when it's your turn to play a card, you can play the top of the deck, which will give you more cards, because cards is good. Drawing more cards is better. If players give you cards, that's useful as well, except for when it isn't, because certain cards will bamboozle you. However, utilizing those cards with cards in your hand can potentially allow you to change the flow of the game. Overall, solid, cute, family-friendly party game that has a lot of different uh, varieties as to how you want to play and social aspects. Aspects. If you don't like that sneaky connivory style feel to a game, this might not be for you. If you want something a little more heavy and crunchy in a card game, this also might not be for you. For those of you who don't like the theme, I suppose it might be something you might want to avoid. And of course, there is take that aspects to this game as you manage your tableau, gather the decorations you need, and prepare to stem, stem off other players. It also doesn't have a two player mode, so you're not going to be able to play in two players. So for those of you who like to play two players, this is a three and a four player player game and there's a specific audience for that as well I suppose so just be aware that these are the limitations of the bunny party game but overall it's a lot of fun it's a great little experience it's something that I think you'll enjoy as long as you have those three and four players definitely my favorite at four players I like the more ability to socialize and whatnot so if you have those four players to play a game that has a lot of social interaction a little bit of backstabbery and connivory check out the game down below link in the description bunny party at Maple Valley and I think you'll enjoy yourself Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that subscribe button, that bell notification button as well, and link in the description where you can pick up this game, as well as 
Moonshell, a mermaid game. We'll have a link down below. You can go to moonshellgame.com and see what my wife has been cooking up for the last year and a half. It's a puzzle style game involving mermaids and moving things around. It's a match three style game. It's a little bit of a Tetris feel as well, where you're trying to gather different seashells into different patterns from the main board onto your player board and rotating and all that kind of stuff. A lot of fun, March 2nd for that one. As well as our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game Robo Junkyard for the game Bunny Party at Maple Valley. And if you're interested in uh, entering the giveaway as well as checking out the campaign, I strongly suggest you do so. For those of you who have a three and four player group of people who enjoy games that have social aspects to them. Also, go ahead and join us on Discord, link in the description, and Patreon. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting us, continuing our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one every week. We haven't missed one except for when I got sick, but otherwise we've been doing this for years now and we have built a great community of wonderful, fun people and I thank you so much for being a part of it. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to uh, developing a bunny party in Maple Valley with you uh, next time. I prefer the star decorations. <laughs> <laughs>